This is our introduction to constructing and interpreting scatter plots. So the first thing you have to ask is what is a scatter plot? It's simply a display of data so that you can analyze or interpret patterns in bivariate data. Now, if you want to put that in your own words, the key terms that you need to know, it's displaying data in a graph. You need to be able to analyze and interpret that and bivariate, that just means two, right? Bi means two, and variate means variables. So two variable data. So this is just like when we were graphing our linear equations and you had an x and y axis. You're gonna see a lot of similarities there. Let's first talk about interpreting scatter plots. When we interpret scatter plots, we look at these things, strength, linearity, slope, and outliers. So let's first talk about strength. This refers to how scattered or not scattered the data is. This one might be the hardest because for me there's no way of saying well this is very scattered and this is not very scattered. It's you have to look at it and establish an opinion. So if you look at these examples down here you can definitely see some that are closer to being a straight line and some that look like they're just people all over a field. So this is something that you have to be able to analyze and interpret. Is it more like a line or is it more scattered? So we refer to strength as strong or weak. All right, linearity, look for that keyword line. We wanna know whether the data pattern is straight or linear. And again, it helps to look at some of these examples down here. When you look, you've got to think, do these make straight lines? Are they curved? Are they somewhere in between? So if something is linear, we know linear means straight line, and nonlinear means anything that is not a straight line. The next one is slope. So you know that slope means that the change in y compared to the change in x. So just like when we studied linear equations, your slope can be positive, like uphill, it can be negative, like downhill, or zero slope, straight line. So those describe scatter plots just like they describe linear equations. And the last one is outlier. You've talked about outliers before when describing mean, median, and mode. So you know that when you talk about mean, an outlier can affect the mean. Well, an outlier on a scatter plot is a data point that doesn't fall with the rest of the data, just like it is when you're talking about other measures of central tendency, except when it's graphed, you're going to see it being separate from the rest of the data. Sometimes it's easier to see outliers on a scatter plot than it is to see in a set of data. If you're a very visual person, you can see that it's very far outside. So let's summarize what we just talked about. Scatter plots are described using these terms. We want to know whether it's strong or weak, whether it has a positive, negative, or zero slope, and whether it's linear or nonlinear. So let's look at these examples and do them together. Okay, so our first one, you want to look first whether you think that these fall close together. So if I draw a line here, and you can use a ruler, it's a really good tool to help you see. If you put a ruler right here, are all the points touching the edge of that ruler or very close? If the answer is yes, which in this case I think it is, then it has a strong correlation almost makes a straight line. The slope, is this a positive uphill slope or a negative downhill slope? Negative. And is it linear or nonlinear? There's what that ruler straight edge comes in handy again. If you can put that edge of the ruler down there and it's touching everything, then you know it's linear. Okay, next example. This one, would you say it's strong or weak? 
Again, if you take your ruler and put it through, is your ruler touching or almost touching all the points? If the answer is yes, and in this case it is, then it's strong. It has what kind of slope? Positive slope. And is it linear or nonlinear? Again, this one is linear. Next example, strong or weak? You take your ruler and place it here. Definitely all those points are gonna to be touching or very close to your ruler. So it's strong. Now, on this one, what kind of slope if it's just a straight, no change in Y, but we do have a change in X. Zero over anything is zero. And it still makes a straight line, so it's linear. All right, this one's interesting. Strong or weak? Now, it might help you to think if you had some kind of uh, variables down here, like if this is some kind of time and this is some kind of money. Could you say that as time increases that money increases? Not really. Can you say that um, money always increases as time goes on? You can't really make any kind of assumptions there, so we're going to say that it has a weak correlation. The, um, well, we kind of have to skip the next question is, does it have a slope? Because it's nonlinear. If something is nonlinear, can it have a slope? No. So, no slope if it's nonlinear. Oops, get my pen back. All right, the next one. Here is a really good scatter plot, right? There's no correlation here. So it's weak. And if it's nonlinear, because there's no correlation, then there cannot be a slope. Okay, so we've talked about interpreting. Now let's talk about constructing. Constructing scatter plots is really no different than constructing any kind of linear graph. The first thing that you need is a table of values. So your table, you might uh, create a table. You might have to create your table from data that you've gathered. Um, or you might have to just read a table if you're given. So you're going to create or read a table of values. And generally, that's just going to be like in an XY format. All right, so we create our table of values. Then on your graph, you need to label each axis. Um, very often, you're going to have your independent and dependent variables. So remember that your independent variable is going to go on Y, and your dependent variable is going to go on X. And sometimes we don't have an independent and dependent variable, um, so just pay attention to the table. Uh, your first table values on the left should always go on your X axis and then on the right on the Y axis. And then last, you're going to plot the points. And remember that when you plot your points, um, each point from the table is X, and then y, and just as a refresher, x is here, y is here, independent, dependent values. All right, so next, we're going to go and do some independent practice.